Oh, little Sony, your cold-blooded reptilian heart trying to receive love for the first time, and you're doing it. You're doing it. You're no longer a machine. You're a human boy. I am digging for flaws to hopefully save us money. I found some. They're not very realistic, but there are some flaws to the Sony a7S III Hyper Machine. I found three at least. Four. If you count the fifth one, we got six. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Sony a7S III with the 20mm 21.8 lent to us by Camera Canada. Thank you so much. My god, they got it to me early. And I've been having so much fun. I've made like four videos already. No, three. And this is the fourth. I've learned quite a bit about this camera just shooting the past couple days. There's a bunch of minor nitpicks and then there's workarounds to fix them. So mostly, total fantastic machine here. But without further ado, let's get this scrub lens off here. We got a 24mm G Master over here. 1.4 Tonys, if it was a foot. My God. My God, Sony, what have you done? What have you done? Oh, the Tonys. We'll take this video, maybe halfway through the video, we'll go outside, do a little vlogging test. Can you vlog with this lens? I know the answer already. The answer is you shouldn't, but we will. This is a fantastic lens, by the way, the 20 mil. I think that's the one. I can't imagine this outperforming it outside. It's gonna be too much background blur. It's heavier. It probably won't be as stable. Like what a fantastic lens. And that brings me to my first discovery. That kit lens, what a piece of shit. I've heard it was, but I was like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. You're looking at like corner sharpness and bullshit like that. Oh, the chromatic aberrations. Oh, oh my wrist. You're chromatic, you're chromatic. I hope your mom chromes you. Thank God I didn't buy that thing. I almost bought the Sony a7 III and the kit lens in Thailand where there was zero chance of returning it ever because it had stayed and I was like, okay, 28 mil, that's a little tight, but if you extend it out there, you get some nice blur back there and then you got the zoom. It's just the colors of it, not good, not very sharp. And then on the long end, it wasn't very magical B-roll. What a bunch of bullshit lens that thing is. And it's heavy, it's heavier than I thought it was. I hate it. And the thing that shocked me when you put active stabilization on, it made it worse. So you have lens stabe, IBIS, and that actually looked pretty smooth. So my theory was right. If you're careful, you could get away with vlogging like that with a stabilized lens and Sony's old IBIS. But when you put the active on, it just it started getting jerky and weird. They were fighting each other. So that makes me think maybe the 16 to 35 Tony 4 stabilized lens would also do that bullshit fighting each other. So there's zero lenses but this one to vlog with. Another thing I discovered is this dynamic range stuff. It's all about the profile. It's all about that S-log. When I compared it to the Fuji, I may have been seeing things, but it killed it. It killed my little Fuji in S-log versus F-log. But when I brought the Eterna profile versus the standard, the Fuji stood a chance. There was moments in that autofocus test where I was like, the Fuji has more dynamic range. How is that possible? How is, what am I seeing with my eyes? The reality was pretty obvious though. It was just, Sony was exposing for my face because I had face exposure on in the menu. And then that kind of clipped the sky a little bit. It made it less blue and less pleasing. So just for a little bit, the Fuji looked better. It looked like it had more dynamic range, even though it didn't. So I actually turned that off in the menu. I don't think face exposure is a good thing. On the Nikon, it's like, oh look, my face is exposed, but the sky is blown out. That's not pleasing. If you walk in a shadow, you should be shadow-like. How's the autofocus? Oh my God. We set it to slow and responsive. All the way up, all the way down. That still looks really fast for slow. probably didn't even set it. So in my opinion, dynamic range is the most pleasing aspect you could have. You could change the colors if you don't like them. We'll get to the colors. That's one of my negatives. 
With the dynamic range, you can't change that. You can't edit it in post, really. You can't lower the contrast. Like, you just see it. It's pleasing, natural, wood-like images. I just love it so much. So Sony is the king at that. You can't beat it. You can't, it's a cinema camera. Let's go to the cinema. We're in it? Oh, now we're in it. Did you see this movie? Oh, hey, Glenn. That's a nice shirt. Could have sworn I saw it at my father's house and he's missing it. I didn't take the shirt, Steve. I told you. I was at his house. We had one cognac. I left early. That shirt was missing before I got there. You stole my dad's shirt and I'll get it back. I'll get it back right now. No, don't hurt me. I took the shirt. I love your dad. I never met my dad. He's like a father to me. I just wanted to carry a piece of him around. You know what? I'm going to adopt you. You're a part of the family now. Come on over for Christmas dinner tonight. It's June. Is it August? Hmm. Still, are you coming? If I can diverge for a second, the Canon R5's low quality line skipped 4K looks slightly worse than the Canon EOS R's cropped 4K. So that's what you're getting. It's not terrible, but the EOS R is what, 1400? It's on sale. This thing's more than double the cost. And you're getting the same base. You get some IBIS. That's nice. Anything else? Better screen? 8K? Yay, that's what you got. Speaking of 8K and hard to edit files, I'll just, I'll mention this one thing and then we'll go outside. The 8K in the Canon, impossible to edit. I don't know what computer could even handle it. The HQ, like all the files are so hard. Whereas the Sony, just a dream. Every, even the hardest mode. I think the hardest is in H.265, doesn't even matter. It's easy. My computer sings. The 4K 120p, I thought there was no way I could even play the file. It plays back with ease, with ease. It's a little, I can't play it back full time before slowing it. Just watching that, it's like, no, nope, we can't. We stutter. But once you slow it down, I can play it smoothly. That's amazing. The whole, but. You lied to me, Sony. You lied. In that press conference, they said there was this high quality mode, all intra, where you can record 600 megabits per second. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't even want it. It's way too much. I don't have the file size, I don't have the capacity to even hold them in my hands without burning myself. I don't even want it, but that's only available in 60p, the 600 megabits. If you go down to 30p, uh, 300 now. 24p, 240 megabits. It's one megabit, 100 megabits per square inch. Take that eye tracking. It's still tracking the eye. Oh God. Wow. I just thought that was weird because I was in the mode and I was like 240. Oh, I thought it was 600. It still looks fantastic. I wouldn't even want more. So I'm like, I'm happy they did that. Thank you. Not even a flaw. I told you that all these were nitpicks with zero credibility. Let's go outside. And yes, I did have active stabilization on the whole time for both lenses. That's what you want. You want it. There was a lot of shake here that you didn't notice because it was on. Just, God damn it. My God, Sony. What have you done? My only worry is that the stabilization is worse on this lens. For some reason, the 20 mil does really good and then every other lens I've tried, the kit lens is the only one. <laughs> it's been much worse. I also have exposure compensation plus one now. I've had it just regular every video I've made. And when I get it back into my computer, I have to raise everything. Everything's just pure shadows. So I know they say you're supposed to overexpose log. Well, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. Is it ruining my life is the real question. Wow. Is this a viable vlogging lens? Is it too much tone? It's no such thing. We're also going to walk through this autofocus path of shame that Fuji always seems to lose me in, so pay attention to that. But let's get to some of these negatives. 
the stepping auto exposure. I didn't notice it the first couple of videos I made, but then all of a sudden it's like flashes everywhere on the cement. I'm just seeing these flashes of light. It's like, I thought that was Fuji's problem. And then Fuji fixed it, and now Sony took it. It was like a, a vo double voodoo witch thing where Sony took their pain, like that movie Green Mile. Ah, oh, take it, boss. Are they telling it? I don't know if it was just that face auto exposure setting. So we're out of it now. So hopefully that stopped happening. So pay attention to it to see if we see exposure flashing, but it's very distracting. Like you turn this cinema rig into an unusable camera, like a Kodak flip flop. See, like right now you'd think you'd want face exposure, but I think this is more pleasing to just leave it like that. I'm in the shadows and I'll be out of it in a second. Just hold their horses. Yeah, we're good. We're still cool. Now another unforgivable mistake. That mode dial. I won't harp on it because I've mentioned it in probably every video, but the fact that you have to hold a little thing awkwardly, fingers on metal is not a great feeling. But, eh, ah, why? And then the exposure, you can just unlock, twist, lock it again. Like why would anybody want that style? You can lock it and leave it locked if you want. Unlock it, move it freely. Who needs to be punched in the gut for that decision, Sony? Another negative, so you can save your money. I just, it could be user error, it probably is. Just 99% you can get around what I'm about to say. But when you're in the custom modes, I've saved, custom one is just this, regular high quality 4K. Custom mode two is 240 frames per second HD, and custom mode three is 4K 120p. You can't change exposure mode in any of them. It's grayed out in the menu. I don't understand it. You can set it, and then okay, I'm in aperture priority. If I want to switch, because I do often, say I'm out here, okay, I want to test dynamic range. Let me take control of the camera. I can't. I have to like go out into movie mode and redo all settings. Like I can't even switch the thing, why? And the quick function menu, you press, there used to be a aperture priority thing there. You just go into that, change it, that switch to some new shit, it's all gone. I don't understand the limitation. What setting is on in my menu system that's ruining my life, Sony? There's something on there. I actually wanted to do that yesterday with the Fuji, just set them up in manual mode to see the sky which I did, I had to go to movie mode. I should just be able to switch, but I couldn't. <laughs> I forgot to mention this. When you turn a custom mode from one to two, you have to then confirm it with a button press. What kind of bullshit is that, Sony? <laughs> Panasonic just lets you switch and then you're in the mode. Obviously I want to switch to this mode. Are you sure? Yeah, just confirm it. You want my credit card number while you're at it? This is a heavy combo. It's doable if you follow the monkey strength protocol, of course, but it's somewhat irritating. It's actually kind of doable though. So that brings me to another negative, which might not even be a negative. It's all preference. Every video I make, someone says, these colors look like shit. And then someone will be like, oh, the colors today. How do you do it? <laughs> so subjective is color. And this is color weirdness in this machine. I just, you can't mess with a Fuji camera, in my opinion, in my subjectivity. I'm like, yeah, that's it. So I compared them. I love the Fuji colors. This was like a little orange, white balance was off. I had to correct it in that sit down shot. It was all orange and weird. So I just corrected it after. Sony colors. In fact, let's switch to a couple, try the different modes. They have a bunch of creative looks. Maybe we find a sweet spot. Okay, wow, that got bright. That's bright and shiny. I think active stable was not on because I just went in and turned it on. D -d -d Why is there so much user error in my heart? Let's just do a little test. Is it more smooth now than it was this whole? Oh God. That's why camera companies don't send me cameras. I don't know what I'm doing. We're clipping. A lot of things are clipping now. Dynamic range, not so good anymore, is it Sony? Still pretty damn good. So how are these colors? Do you love them? We're just in standard. 
Nothing's changed. I didn't mess with the saturation or the sharpness. We decent? All right, now we're in FL. This one seems to be the worst dynamic range. Everything is clipping now, even the shirt was. And this is where Sony needs to get a soul. Like, why are you naming them FL, ST? Give me the name, name it something. FL, what the hell is that? Fruity Loops? What was that jerk motion? I saw it, jerk, jerk ass trick. Has a stabilization. That was the out of focus. Now we're in in mode. And what the hell happened to my shirt? It looks orange now. And that's weird. What does in stand for? In between the right color? Cause you're in between it. And we're back to S-Log. That's where the cinema happens. Sony put their best foot forward, their best S-Log in the camera. Canon just withheld. I'll give you the one version, the lower end one, made of hot dogs and shit. One thing, I don't know if this is a bug, could be updated with the firmware, but I cannot record 240 frames per second or 4K 120p on my V90 card. I have one, doesn't work. They say, oh, as soon as I press record, it says, oh, put a V90 card in there. I was like, it is. So it doesn't work and maybe they will update it so it will, but right now, which one do you buy? You, it's a gamble and you can't return SD cards. Once you open them, it's like, that's it. It's yours now. So which one do you buy that will work? So you have to get one of their CFX, <laughs> CF Express A cards, which are fantastic. I'm using it right now. And the files seem to transfer pretty quick through USB-C, so it's not terrible, but I'm used to just taking the card out. You would need a new charger now. Charger? A new card reader. Do they even have them? CF Express A reader? I just bought the XQD reader. I don't even have the card now. Ah, oh, I had an S1. It's gone. I still have the card. I have no way to use it though, unless we get a Nikon in here. Is the stabilization much better now though? that we had the active on. I can't believe it was off. I thought I turned that thing right on. It was. There's only, I don't even know what happened when it turned off because it's saved to the custom mode unless I resaved it, which I think I did when I changed something else. Oh God, I'm a moron. The reality is though, this is a fantastic camera. It's just the colors. You might have to learn how to tweak them a bit if you don't like them, but it's only when you do the side by side against the Fuji, nobody can win that battle. But like on its own, it looked good. When I made my first video, it was just this. Walking with the 20 mil, I was like, that looks good. I put the Fuji Eterna LUT on there. What was that? It was like something really fast and it disappeared. It disappeared. There's a runner. Focus on him, Sony. Do it. Stop shoulder detecting me. Oh, you're an asshole. In the debate on which lens to buy, if you were thinking between the 20 mil and the 24, after seeing this on the screen, it was kind of hard to ignore the 24, and I bet it looked better in the studio as well. But it is heavier, I don't, like 100 grams or more. It's noticeable. Oh, that runner, he cut the corner, he's gonna kill me now. Is this good content waiting for the runner to kill me? He's toning. He's toning now, but that's when they're in their worst form. Oh God. Oh, he's coming. Oh my God, the suspense. You know what I forgot? I was gonna switch to the Black Pro Mist filter. Completely forgot, I wanted to see. I don't mean to alarm you, but the Philip Bloom Theater called and there's a matinee special this Tuesday afternoon. Honestly, I'm looking for the flaws in the system. They're just, they're few and far between. Even the menu system, it's not great. It's a little cheesy colored as well. I don't know who did that. Pink is your first option. It's not the best, but it's kind of good. Like you got both columns viewable. You see one, oh, what's in that sub column? You can see it and skip past it if you want. It's actually pretty good. For Sony being the worst of the bunch, they've improved. I would say it's one Achilles heel might be battery life. We're at 54% and I've only made this video. It was fully charged. So it's not very long and I haven't even shot slow motion yet. So usually when I get out here, it's like, 
at least 50% for one video. Fuji's better. It's a bit of a deal breaker, actually. I'm not buying it. I can confirm the standard stabilization was saved to my custom mode because I changed the volume. It was like too high and then I came out here and then I saved it. So that whole bunch of bullshit you saw until I changed it to active was all just no stable. Just the regular IBIS, which showed you that it sucked, but whatever. I'm gonna leave. What do you think? How'd it perform today? Are there any deal breakers? Thanks for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. New design. The broccoli man. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time. Just in case some of y'all are curious, we'll do 1.4. I'll stop it down to 2.8 so we can see, then 4, and then 5 point bullshit 6 to see it. So here's 2.8. Is it better now? Because I believe 1.4 is overkill, and when you're vlogging, you want to show some stuff. So stop being a freak. Let's do 4. Tony 4? That's bullshit. That's bullshit now. You pushed it too far. You didn't have enough ego to realize you're still a human being on the planet and you're not gonna float away into space. For, what was that shake? Oh boy. Let's do uh, 5.6. All right, you should be arrested. You're filming on an A7S 3 at 5.6. She's a GoPro. No, your files won't be there when you get home. So what?